animals use many different combs, lotions, and creams. Many of them are designed to seduce their mates, others to clean their bodies. As you'll see, some of these substances are surprising, and others are very simple. For instance, saliva. With the classic tongue licking and some toothbrushing, you can keep your fur well combed and clean. But not every mammal can comb or wash itself with just its tongue. For some of them, it would be very painful, to say the least. What is this animal doing? Is it licking itself? It's clear its bristles do not need to be combed, and that it is impossible to get to its skin to remove the parasites, even with such long nails as those. But if the hedgehog is not cleaning itself, why is it licking its bristles? This bristle-licking behavior is not easily found in nature. However, scientists say that this strange conduct is part of the cleaning habits of this species. No explanation has been given, but they have given it a name. Auto-spitting. After following a specimen for several days, we found that the hedgehog usually ate something before auto-spitting and licking its mantle. At first we thought it was looking for larvae, but then we found that it was looking for strong-smelling things and that it mixed them with its saliva. Sometimes it chewed rosemary leaves, but it preferred other animals' stool. It seems the hedgehog wants to hide its own smell. It masks its smell with another smell. It scents itself. We shouldn't be surprised by the hedgehog's custom. Our most sophisticated perfumes are made of very bad-smelling essences. A minute portion of foul-smelling goat musk, combined with other odors, results in delicate and suggestive aromas that change body smell. The fragrances that man likes the most are designed by flowers. But are we insects? Is this just another coincidence? Some little creatures also resort to lotions to camouflage themselves. The skimmer is a lazy creature. Most of the time it hangs around on plant stems from which it extracts the essence to produce its foam. In just a few minutes, bubbles will cover its body and will hide it from predators. It seems the foam is so bitter that nobody wants to taste it. It's also thought that it may work as an isolating air chamber. Skimmers live in arid regions under a burning sun during the warmest season. Therefore, it's also said that the main function for such a hydrating lotion is ultraviolet ray protection. If these theories are true, skimmers are the proud owners of a multiple patent for a UV-40 sun protection factor perfumed moisturizing cream. Moreover, everybody needs a sun lotion and many animals have delicate skin. The shiny appearance of some amphibians is due to hydrating lotions produced by special glands in their skins. Exposing yourself to the sun is dangerous. It warms, regulates and lights you up, 
But if you're not careful, it may burn, scorch, and kill you. The sun's burning energy is such that there are people who make use of it. Vultures usually get very dirty due to their feeding habits, and little bits of decaying food may be lodged among their feathers. They clean themselves often, but a possible mass infestation of bacteria and germs could escape from such a large comb. Vultures have learned that a sunbath taken at noon, when the atmosphere is not a good ultraviolet filter, and when radiation is most aggressive, is the most efficient system to get rid of any microbes that want to live among their feathers. Man employs the same ultraviolet cleaning and germicide system to sterilize water, air, or canned food. It's a really efficient system, although risky, because ultraviolet light may burn the skin or blind a person in just a few seconds while also cleaning you. Many other birds take sun baths like vultures do, and hingas spend most of their time sunning themselves they don't want a radioactive cleaning job. They only want to dry off. They're underwater hunters and have to soak their feathers to keep from floating too much. Wet feathers, however, are not good for flying, and you never know when danger might crop up. And hingas must take sun baths after each of their plunges in order to be able to fly. They spread their wings and body as much as they can to get as much radiation as possible. The well-aired and sun-warmed feathers will dry very quickly. A combination of airing and evaporation. We do the same thing when we hang our washed clothes out to dry. We spread and stretch the clothes so the sun can shine on them well, not to prevent wrinkles and save ironing as some people think. Most birds, even those that live in aquatic ecosystems, do not go underwater. They don't need to do it and can't afford to. Soaking in water means weighing too much and then you can't fly. Flight control is achieved thanks to feathers. Air-adapted surface-making feathers must be in good condition, clean and in good order. The beak is the tool that orders the thousands of feathers covering a bird. This feather overlaps this one, and this one that other one. Water helps to wash dirt away and it's most refreshing and relaxing. And who can forget the pleasure of taking a cool shower on a hot day? For birds, water helps to make another essential task easier, feather combing. As you know, 
It's much easier to comb yourself when you're wet. Duckbills are different from other birds' bills. Their edge is serrated. They have teeth, like every other comb. A duck needs to have its feathers perfectly aligned, making flat surfaces that do not hinder movement. Their frenetic combing is proof of that. Sometimes they seem to be back combing their feathers. In the end, ducks glide on liquid surfaces and make swimming really easy. But their gliding over water is possible thanks to another of their inventions. A waterproof substance makes their feathers waterproof, so not a drop sticks to them. Water actually slides over them. This waterproof feature has another function. Prevents water from reaching their skin during the hours and days these birds spend in water. Thanks to this waterproof substance, they float and swim underwater and remain dry inside. Their waterproof lotion is generated by some special glands they have near their tail. When they produce it, they rub their heads in it and then spread it all over their bodies. Oils and fats are excellent water repellents. When we spread them over our clothes or our mountain boots, we achieve the same effect as ducks, and leather remains protected and dry when it rains or snows. Humidity is not a problem in itself. The problems appear when it's cold as well. A body in water loses its warmth four times faster than when it's dry. That's why it's very easy to suffer hypothermia when you're wet. This is a creek in the mountains. Two days ago, it was completely frozen, even though it's very difficult for moving water to freeze. This year in Spain, winter temperatures have reached minus 25 degrees centigrade. Just a few meters from the ice, this aquatic blackbird is clear proof that good waterproofing, when applied to a tailored feather raincoat, is the best solution to endure the water and low temperatures. After preparing to plunge into the freezing water, the insulated bird will go after its prey, swimming underwater. Thanks to its waterproof lotion, similar to modern mineral oil, its feathers endure it, one plunge after another. Water, clean water, is not available to everybody especially in those ecosystems where it is the scarcest and most precious resource. Dry cleaning is then the only solution. However, you may sometimes need just a drop of water or some humidity to make some things shinier. The huge eyes of the desert gecko do not have lids, and it's really windy here and the fine desert sand gets everywhere.
Besides, we have to mention the digging habits of this species that force the gecko into closer contact with sand grains. Its eyes are well protected by a hard and crystal clear scale, which acts as a windshield against external agents. However, this sharp-edged sand, when it gets into your eyes, is a bother and may even damage your sight. The only water available is in its own salivary glands, some very small water deposits. Just a little water. The gecko is going to show us that its tongue and a very little water is the only windshield cleaner that works without leaving any marks on the glass. Dry cleaning is also used in other places. It's very useful in certain specialized cleaning. Some things are only cleaned by sandblasting. Feathers are the perfect hiding place for parasites, and although the larger ones are removed with a comb, that's with the beak, the smallest microorganisms are not bothered by it or by water. The cleaning habits of many birds include dust and sand baths. They roll on dry ground and raise enough particles so they get really well dusted. Some herons also take dust baths to prevent water-loving fungi and other infections, but their baths are really surprising. Herons usually live in places where water does not allow dust to form. Besides, they feed on fish or amphibians, and since the skin of frogs and fish or eels is covered with slimy substances, their problem is a really significant one. After they swallow their slippery prey, their feathers are filthy with sticky matter that is not easy to remove because sand is not available and the heron's beak is not serrated. Therefore, their only option is to resort to talcum powder. If we watch these birds at the end of the day, we might think they're just preening and combing themselves. However, these herons have a special group of feathers on their chest. The function of these feathers is to be ground into powder by the bird's bill. Once the feathers are ground into powder, it's spread all over the dirty areas. Feather powder and talcum powder are used for almost the same purpose to protect what is constantly wet. Talcum powder is highly absorbent and applied over the skin, it prevents rashes and skin diseases. Man originally employed it for sanitary purposes. Nowadays, it's a question of fashion. Almost everybody uses makeup.
but there are people who prefer creams to powders. Mud and clay are said to help care for the skin. Although their therapeutic powers are sometimes exaggerated. There are people who have turned it into a holy rite. The only sure thing is that mosquitoes will have a much harder time biting us if we're covered in mud. And this is the objective many mammals pursue when they cover themselves with mud. Wet or dried mud is a protective layer that adds some centimeters to the skin where parasites and mites can't live. There's no doubt that hair is the suitable place for fleas and lice, as well as any large wrinkle in the skin. The best solution to fight these pests and to prevent their consequences seems taken from the best spa. However, this natural habitat is much older than the appearance of the decadent Roman spas. Mud is very efficient against ticks, but sometimes it's not enough. There are other parasites that are not overcome by mud, licking, or rubbing. Flies are so persistent in their obsession to land on a few square centimeters of our body that the best solution is to kill them if you don't want to lose your cool. Flies, however, are really fast. They're usually too fast. Hand motions are not efficient most of the time. An elastic extension as long as a tail multiplies your speed and is really efficient. Fly swatters work either by repelling or killing flies. Thanks to their length, they reach the most unreachable points, the insect's favorite spots. Apart from the whipping effect, a good fly swatter must have a mobile, flat, and hard surface to hit with. By copying animal tails, we have made very efficient tools or we just have given a handle to a hairy tail to protect us from mosquitoes. And don't forget that a fly swatter is not a luxury. In some latitudes, it protects us from the means of transportation of some of the world's most dangerous diseases. But be careful with the power you put behind it. It hurts. Flies and many other insects are considered repugnant because they live among the most repulsive filth. That may be so on some occasions, but there is no other living being that devotes so much time to personal cleanliness than these arthropods. You can't watch a fly for five minutes before it very soon starts washing its hands. Ants are also clean, but we're not going to point out how clean insects are. Ants are the main characters of the strangest cleaning system in nature, even if it's against their own will. Certain species of birds have discovered strange properties in the formic acid of ants, and they have learned to use it to their benefit. Yes learned. It's thought that chicks copy the curious ant bath when they watch their parents behaving this way.
It's not clear why birds take ant baths. It could be they want to make their own anti-parasite formic acid lotion. It has also been suggested that formic acid is good for arthritis. Although it has only been tested on humans with doubtful results. And nobody knows if birds suffer from rheumatism so much as to create such a habit. In any case, ant baths are not easy to watch and study. However, this behavior happens in spite of the ants' bites when they feel attacked. Nobody would suffer such torture if they didn't profit from it. Therefore, birds will suffer the ants' bites as long as possible in exchange for a good dose of ant lotion. Strange lotions, delicate soaps, and curious baths. With these natural cosmetic patents, we could open the most sophisticated spa. And they say that animals are dirty.